out of the wind. I want you to see Mike as I'm going to talk about a really good, maybe an hour discussion with me and Mike have. And, and it's very interesting and I'm only going to do it because I felt there's enough that we talked about and the way Mike, Mike is a good friend of mine. It's interesting, I know Mike, I know Mike for a few years and I know a lot of friends on the street. I think that's one of them sitting up there at for years and they were and Mike never met Ruben. I always found it interesting how so many of my friends that have been on the street, off the street, different lifestyles, all live in the same area. Oftentimes they've never met each other. And that was another experience just a little while ago. When Ruben took off, I had a little talk with him. But I'm gonna walk. I want you to say I'm gonna talk about as much of what we discussed Mike but I'm gonna teach it over there. I don't think, I think I might have had my video with you. I'm sitting here, hopefully you heard the first few minutes and hopefully I'll get that point. Well, sometimes when I'm working, when I work on the phone, I gotta get out of the window. Sometimes my friends will come up and I can see that they're wanting to talk. They want, they have questions about life. and there are other, if you will, myths about Mary Magdalene. And I explained that those are not in Scripture. And Mike said, well, that's good, John, because it's interesting that she was a key witness of the resurrection and she was a key witness of other events of the life of Jesus. And Mike had it right. He said, I always found that interesting. I said, and one of the reasons it's also interesting for people that are seeking knowledge is when the Bible was written in the first century I said the testimony of women was considered not high but low meaning if it was fake if you wanted to write a book that was fake you would not have a person like Mary or a woman as one of the first witnesses of the resurrection and to have played such an important role in the gospel and the story and life of Christ. Because if you wanted to write something that was fake and you wanted people to believe it, you would not include the testimony of a woman. I said, so we as Christians actually use that as one of the proofs that scripture is historically accurate. Because if it wasn't a true story, 
you would never include Mary's role like that. But because it was true, and it happened the way it did, the writer of the Gospels put it down the way it happened. Okay, that was interesting. Now, Mike, as he's asking some very good questions, he says, you know, John, what about the man by the name of Saul? He says, I do understand that Saul, who later became Paul, that he was against Christianity. And I have heard that later he became a Christian. And Mike says, I wonder if he, why that happened. I wonder if he did it for a particular reason. Was it maybe like he was fake? Maybe he did it for the money, John, or whatever. So I said, well, you know, Mike, that's a famous story in the Bible, Acts chapter 9. And as I explained the conversion, most of you should be familiar with it. So when I explained it to Mike, I said, yes, Mike, he was against the Christian movement in the first century. He was a persecutor of Christians. And then his famous conversion, when the Lord appeared to Saul, when he was going to persecute and consent them to the death of Christians, he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Saul would reply, who are you? And he said, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. And then I told Mike that Saul would be blinded for three days. He would be sent unto a certain man by the name of Ananias. That man would e explain the gospel to Saul. He baptized Saul and Saul became Paul. I said, and then he became one of the great missionaries and witnesses of Jesus Christ. And Mike was interested in that because he had a different opinion of Paul. I said it was a legitimate conversion. And Mike says, uh, but what about the others that knew him, John, before? Did they believe that he really changed? I said, well, you know, Mike, they didn't believe his conversion was sincere. Many of the early Christians were about in the book of Acts. But there was a man by the name of Barnabas. Uh, Bible students would know that's so, uh, Paul and Barnabas were the companions in the book of Acts. And so Barnabas kind of vouched for Paul and said, no, it was a real conversion. And I explained to Mike how Paul played such an important role in the book of Acts, in the Bible, the apostle to the Gentiles. So he had a little confusion about Paul, and he wanted to get that right. Now, Mike asked me questions that came up yesterday when I taught after I turned off the video. Wanted to know about the story of why people in the Old Testament lived to long periods of time, and he talked about the flood of Noah, questions about that, and about the eating of meat, and the Old Testament regulations of certain fish and things that were forbidden. All of those questions exactly came up after I was done teaching with my daughter Becky yesterday. Every one of those questions. I said, you know, it's interesting, Mike, yesterday I had a discussion about that. And I tried to, and I did cover it. I gave an explanation that some Bible teachers use for why people lived earlier, or lived older before the flood. <laughs> it's some of you might be familiar with it, but some scholars will teach that there was sort of like a sphere around the earth and it never rained, the scripture <laughs> indicates it never rained until the day of Noah's flood. And the <coughs> depths were broken up, and then the windows of heaven, if you will, were open. I said, so it's possible our earth had sort of like a greenhouse atmosphere, and because of the high oxygen content in that type of atmosphere like that, <laughs> maybe that's why people live longer. But the interesting thing was, this was the exact questions that my daughter was asking me yesterday. And I just found it strange as every one of them, almost in the same order, were coming up. So it caused me to say there's a little more significance here. So I covered a little bit more with Mike. <coughs> he had questions today. <coughs> he wanted to know things. <coughs> and then he tells me, and I, I told him about how the Emperor Nero martyred both Paul and Peter. I said, they were both killed by the Emperor Nero, I think it was in A.D. 62. I said, the only this disciple that actually survived the attempt to be martyred was John, banned to the Isle of Patmos. And so as this discussion was carrying on, and Mike had some very good questions, 
that I could tell he probably wanted to ask me for a long time. Today he was just seeking answers. And then he tells me, you know, John, and I've known Mike through, I don't know, five years now. He said, when I was in jail one time, he said, I'll never forget this experience. Now it fits in with the significance of his misunderstanding of Saul and Paul. And when I explained that Paul was, had a great message, God had given him a particular calling, a particular message, apostle to the Gentiles, it was a sovereign call. He said, when I was in jail, John, whenever, many years ago, he said, I was in my cell, and when I turned around, maybe it was a, a time where the gas could be in the open, he said, a man had walked up to him and said to him, where's your Bible? And Mike said, when he turned around and said, well, it's here in my cell, as soon as he turned back around, the man was gone. Now, it could have been an angelic experience. He said, but because it was such a strange experience, I went and picked up my Bible, John, and I opened up to see it was a yearly Bible that he was reading through at the time. He never read through the whole Bible, but he's read it parts of it. He said, I knew it was the letter of Romans, the book of Romans. He says, I don't remember what verse wrong. And then he asked me, what's significant about Romans? <laughs> and I had already covered a lot what I just discussed. I said, well, you know who wrote Romans? I said, Paul. Now that had a special impact on Mike because his view of Paul, then it was corrected today. And then I said, it might be one of the most important letters that Paul wrote. Many scholars and teachers believe it's one of the most important ones to teach theologically. I didn't explain all that way. And he said, he, but it caught his attention that it was Paul's, if you will, one of Paul's most important letters and maybe the most important letter of the whole New Testament. And he was surprised about that because of his former view of Paul and Saul. And he said, well, what's the main message of that letter, John? And it's interesting because you all know I taught Romans in those books. I said, Mike, if I had to sum it up, the main message is men are not saved by the law. The law cannot save them, but they're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. I had simplified it in a way. And he said, you know, John, I've always felt it was important to try to keep the commandments and to try to obey. He said, but I've always believed that the only way to be saved is through believing in Jesus Christ, which would sum up really, you know, the letter of Paul. How each event turned out and how many of the questions were the exact things that came up yesterday, that's what caused me, and I, I would have sat and it would have been harder to cover it quickly sitting there with that wind the way it was. Those are types of events. You know, it's interesting, I'm on the other side of the bridge from where I live, and I often come to this side because if I have to catch up on work on the phone, it takes about three hours for me to do that. And I knew if I went to that side, a lot of my friends would find me, not in a bad way. So to have a little time, I come to this side, but it's not work for me which is okay. And I'm not Jesus, but there's times in the Bible where Jesus actually said he needed to have a time of rest. His vehicle pulling up, I don't like And then when he would go, they would still go to him. Now, we as Christians, though, had the answers. And it's okay if people are seeking. And maybe even they're waiting to ask a question or they're waiting to, you know, find us because they have some important questions they want to ask. I'm glad you got to see Mike. You might have seen him before on one of the videos. But the most interesting part of our discussion was the trajectory of each question and going to the next reason and the next person. And then at the end, the message that the Lord had for him, maybe if you will, through an angel when he was in prison, that the message is in the book of Romans. The way that happened is interesting, more than anything else. Uh, so this will be a little talk, teaching, and you got to see for a few minutes my friend Mike.
Mike's been around for a long time. Mike is homeless, but Mike fishes, and he also works. Matter of fact, his boss just pulled up, and when we were talking, and I think he wanted to take Mike to work, and I think Mike wanted to spend a little more time because today he had the things that he learned, which was good. So I'll just share this as one of the videos where I say homeless friends. Hopefully you get a different opinion at times when maybe you see some of my friends. I'm going to walk back to Mike now. I hate it when vehicles pull up. But I'm going to walk back and see Mike. There's his vehicle in a second. I pray a blessing on everybody. As you can see, it was real windy. You might not have heard the beginning of it, but at least you hear this part. Oh, that's his boss now. All right, God bless everybody.